Uh, you probably have seen my video uh, was this thing operational, which is an atmospheric pressure plasma jet called plasma generator. Uh, yes, so um, I have received uh, questions on how it is, um, what's the internal design, how it looks from inside. So in this video, I'm going to disassemble it and explain uh, how it works. So if you want to, I'm not going to show it in operation, so for that see my first video, uh, but uh, I'm going to show and explain uh, everything, the circuit, the power supply and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, I'll probably begin with the outside and then go inside. So uh, here you can see two switches, one is power main, the other is high voltage generator then the voltage regulator um, trigger so in this i've uh, modified it and i've added the trigger so um, and i also added a gas valve uh, like uh, electric electrically operated gas valve so uh, so now it only um, uses gas it only uses gas and uh, the plasma arc starts only when I press the trigger pedal. So, and also there is a two gas regulator. Uh, there are two gas regulator uh, knobs, which is a small. Uh, it was supposed to be used for the gas mixing. So, and on the back of the machine, you can see that there are two inlets for gas. Uh, and this one is plugged. It actually, it actually doesn't work quite well. So I've tried mixing uh, oxygen with argon or oxygen with helium, I think. Yeah, and it didn't work well because you probably need, um, how do you call this? Um, re reverse gas valves, which prevent uh, the gas going the going the wrong direction it depends so if you have like if you're mixing two gases uh, the pressure which is greater will push the gas uh, with lower pressure down the line yeah so it didn't work quite well so uh, now I'm only using one regulator but I'll probably upgrade it um, sometime yeah also you can see that uh, there are switch uh, there are like switching pins for um, high voltage so you can basically uh, so the uh, so this system uses DC high voltage so it uses a um, it uses a rectified uh, high voltage DC output so and the electrode construction um, is here is like that so the negative electrode negative uh, electrode is here and the positive is down there the high voltage is there and this is the ground so uh, but we can reverse it and it produces uh, interesting effects so plasma starts to uh, it changes the the appearance and the behavior of the plasma so uh, yeah now I'm going to disassemble it so yeah let me flip it let me flip it oh, like this. Yeah, so this is the standard box, like an equipment box I bought at electric store. Yeah, so yeah, so let's get so let's disconnect this and then we get the cover off here. Yeah. It's a little bit, it's a little bit cramped in here. So, uh, yeah, that's how it looks from the inside. So you can see here first. This is a uh, this is a uh, power supply, which is a, a 36 volt power supply. Uh, just standard LED uh, power supply you can buy almost in any store. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not sure how many amps because the uh, the markings are on that on that side. Yeah, so uh, 
but I think it's 36 volts and maybe 6 to 10 amps. You don't need that much. Uh, yeah, now you can see that uh, yeah, the power mainly goes through the switch. Um, and then we have 36 volts from the power supply uh, going through this switch and through the trigger. Uh, so, uh, you can probably see there is very little uh, smart or uh, like microcontrollers, uh, stuff like that. So, from my experience uh, with this kind of application, it just destroys microchips like I don't know, because uh, there's high voltage involved. Uh, anything that is smarter than a transistor, it probably gets destroyed. Uh, so, yeah, so I tried to use different kinds of relays or switches uh, to trigger, but then I figured out it's uh, the best way is to just cut the uh, cut the voltage with the pedal. So I'm basically, so the operating voltage it goes through the pedal. Yeah, just a pedal from the sewing machine, and it's like 10 amps rated. Yeah, it's rated 10 amps and 200 volts, and I'm giving it 10 amps and 36 volts. Yeah. Uh, so also for regulating voltage, I'm using uh, a PWM uh, standard, pretty standard uh, regulator. Uh, it works kind of well. Uh, also, there is a there is a DC DC tiny little transformer. Uh, so I need it to, uh, to operate the uh, the valve because as you can see it's like 12 volts DC and I have 36. So I need to get it down to 12. Uh, to operate uh, to operate the valve so when the so thing is when the trigger when the trigger is working uh, then the valve is on and so it greatly saves the amount of argon I'm using because this thing operates in argon yeah um, so also you can see a ZVS driver uh, which is a zero voltage switch which is a pretty standard thing for like Tesla coils I bought it on AliExpress for like 10 bucks uh, or you can probably build your own there are plenty of schematics uh, yeah so I think this one is rated like up to 48 volts and maybe also 10 amps yeah and then you can see the uh, the fly in the flyback transformer uh, this one is the rectified flyback transformers probably from some plasma TV or something like that so you can see that there are uh, so there will be two two coils uh, yeah and there would be like four uh, four turns in each coil uh, and the central is connected uh, yeah, you can see, you can see it. Uh, so, and then the red one is the high voltage, and then the black one is the ground, and you can see everything is isolated with some uh, hot glue, and kind of works okay to isolate the pins on the back of the uh, flyback transformer. Mm, yeah, and that's probably it. Uh, you can also see there are two, uh, there are two valves. Uh, that I can and I can use them to regulate the flow of gas and then then they mix in here and this tube goes to through the valve and goes to the end of the nozzle so this is basically it it's pretty simple um, it actually took me a while to um, and a lot of like trial and error to uh, get this thing working but now it works kind of stable there is very little arcing, arcing. Uh, arcing, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, and the the plasma torch is a few centimeters long uh, and it's kind of stable. I use it to uh, change surface energy of different uh, of different materials, uh, mostly plastics, uh, and so they uh, they become adhesive.
so I can glue something to them. Uh, yeah, so that's how it looks like. Yeah, so uh, I hope this helps you and uh, if you use that or upgrade my design, uh, it would be great. Just uh, just make sure you uh, adhere to all the safety precautions because this is like really high voltage and it can be really dangerous. So if you're doing this, make sure you know what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's for the... Uh, that's how it's uh, constructed inside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so for the operation, see the first video, I explain uh, a lot of how it works and how you uh, how you operate it. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, uh, I built this one based on the a lot of videos uh, on the internet. So, uh, if there is something unclear or you want to know something more about especially about the construction of the nozzle uh, because I mean the construction of the nozzle it affects greatly the uh, how the plasma behaves so and took me a while also a lot of trial and error to come up with this nozzle design and it works uh, so and it's uh, and it's stable uh, there's no arcing uh, yeah uh, so uh, if you know more if you want to know more about that let me know yeah thanks for watching from Kiev with love see you guys